ma'am. Uh, I can't hear you, ma'am. I'm I'm just wondering. It's me only, or others also? No, you can hear me now. Can. Sorry, my mic yes. was. Can yes, you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Now oh, we did can you hear me. anything? Did Nothing. Yes, ma'am. Not a word. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> okay, I got to repeat everything now. Okay, no, I didn't I don't think I said anything of too much of significance except that welcome and so glad to see all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, my my mic was elsewhere. I didn't even notice that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Avni. Right. So we're in uh, week 10 of our uh, class on emotional wholeness and um uh we've uh, as I was saying we were we, you know we've kind of come almost a little more than halfway into uh, the course. And, uh, um, uh, you know, if we're looking at the progress of how we've been looking at emotional wholeness, you know, it's, it's almost like coming up to, to those uh, climaxes, you know, of how uh, you, can, you can receive what God really has for you. So what we've been uh, learning, which we started off last week, was how do we journey into staying emotionally whole? So when we look at a progression of what we've learned, we we did look at the causes. We looked at um, uh, what what are what are ways of how we can uh, uh, how how do we receive our emotional wholeness? What are the bases of it? And how do we come to a place of journeying into that emotional wholeness? We spoke about healing, spoke about deliverance, um, emotional wholeness, and now we've come to a place to say how do we maintain that that place of being emotionally whole? How do we continue to stay emotionally whole? And something that we spoke about the last week was that um, as we're living through life, we are going to be facing different situations, different kinds of challenges. We will face different events, um, a lot of, uh, lot of things that come in our way that is unexpected, can be traumatic, can be sudden, there can be mistakes that we make, and all of this can cause about emotional ill health or, uh, or, or a place where we go back to that, that space of having an emotional um, uh, difficulty. So we need to, knowing that you are, we are living in a world where there is trouble, we've got to cushion ourselves with certain disciplines. And that's what we looked at yesterday, and we looked at, uh, sorry, last week, and we, we looked at two uh, disciplines. So question time, would somebody like to recap quickly what were the two things that we spoke about? What were the two disciplines that we referred to the last time? Uh, and I think we did some exercises or, you know, we did break out into rooms and uh, you all got to hear somebody else's story. And often I see that when you hear a story, uh, some of these things stick to you and, uh, you know, they, they continue to remind you, oh, this is what somebody did. And, uh, you know, I, I, I need to, uh, you know, take from that, learn from that. That was a testimony and I want to do what they did so because it it uh, showed how god's word proved right for them so so yeah so opening it out to hearing from you all as to what were the two things that we looked at what were those spiritual disciplines in order for us to be emotionally whole this is the most difficult part for a student isn't it okay morning pastor Yes, Maggie. Uh, good, good he morning. said one was uh, renouncing lies with the truth of God, and second one was speaking blessing and canceling curses. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mangi. Yes. So we, we spoke about two things is to renounce the lies with God's word. Um, so we, we had spoken about the need to, first of all, identify what those untruths or those lies are, and these usually come in the form of thoughts, or it may come in the form of suggestions, it may come in the form of ideas, it may come uh, in the form of remarks, comments that others make, accusations that others make, we make on ourselves. Also, the enemy throws at us, the devil throws at us. And for us to be, first of all, aware, so like we were talking about last time, you can know the counterfeit only if you know what is real. You know the 
you so you know the truth only if you know that there it's a lie so for that you've we've got to be in a place to um keep ourselves completely um rooted in the truth of god's word because only then will you be able to identify it and once you identify it what we need to do is to renounce it is to uh, come against it is to rebuke it we we did say that uh, the word of god was was one is one of the of of the truths the second source of truth we spoke about was the presence of the holy spirit he's the one who convicts who's the one, he's the one who guides he's the one who teaches and when we are in tune with the word of god he leads us and guides us into every truth the second one we spoke about was to speak blessing and to cancel curses we we've discussed this very many times about the power of words and what words can generate or influence or impact our, uh, how it can gener influence or impact our lives so uh, we 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 made commitments last time of how we need to consistently be speaking a blessing that is aligned to god and uh, staying uh, staying in that so that we don't open any door or we don't create for ourselves those kind of destinies because words we understand are those that carry either a blessing or a curse so that uh, the the knowledge of knowing that what we speak is is how we declare god's promises in our lives and to be able to cancel a curse that is to simply um cancel any kind of words or negate or nullify any of those words that don't declare to us what um what god has spoken in his word so we we take that authority over our lives and pronounce a blessing and negate the curses over us so whether it has come to us knowingly or whether it has come to us unknowingly we take authority in jesus name and to uh, speak uh, to to discard or to nullify those curses we saw examples in scripture on jabez we you know we were looking at how there were just uh, there's just two or three verses that's given to on on his account but yet those verses are so powerful in the way that though his mother named him a pain he actually spoke and said that god would enlarge his territory that god's hand would be upon him and that he would keep god would keep him from evil and that he may not cause pain so that was the prayer of jabez to to understand that whatever has been put as a curse over him uh, he turned it around knowing that god would give him a blessing would make him a blessing we see also balam where he could not curse what god had blessed and we see that uh, of uh, of that in 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 scripture so for us as the lessons that we we learn is to be careful about what we pronounce what we say and do because as we looked at earlier it opens the doors and it creates for the the curse to be rooted in ourselves so we watch our words and we cancel every negative pronouncement and speak a blessing um on it okay so this is looking back in the last week okay um how many of us were really able to apply this to our day to day lives how many of us you know consciously said okay this week is something that i am going to take a watch over my words or i'm going to start believing the truth i'm not going to lie and uh, or, or i'm not going to believe in those lies so you know this is it's an active phase of you're actively walking in this truth and um uh, you know the the anything that we learn cannot be will not be um uh internalize unless we really pay attention and and tell and and help ourselves to come to a place of doing in faith what we have learned so so even even uh, you know being careful about what we speak is something that's done in faith right we say okay it it may look as if 
uh, through your through life's journey okay what does it matter i mean i'm just thinking about something does it matter but then he takes that faith and says no this is what god's word says and this is how i will operate and i will function in faith okay so any any uh, the last one week okay it's okay if, if we haven't done it. it that's perfectly okay but just for us to encourage one another that um, you know, you tried something like this and, and you have seen that the peace of God has settled. So anybody, Mangi, you had raised your hand. I'm wondering, was that a mistake or did you have something to say? Uh, I was raising my hand to say that, that I, I applied what I learned this week. Wonderful. Can, can you give us, can you, can you help us with what you did? Because I think it's, it's going to be really encouraging for all of us. If it's something that you can share, if it's not too personal. Okay, sure, Pastor. Um, I just, because I just, I just say that um, I'll be confessing everything positively and that i will not let anything that's happened to affect how I, I i think how i live or how i i worship god so every morning i confess i confess uh i say positive words like today it will be a positive day i'll not be struggled i'll not struggle with anything i'll not think of negative thoughts but i'll be productive and i'll praise the lord yeah things like that Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mangi. Thank you. Anybody else that you have applied it through the last one week? Anybody? Okay. So, yes. Yes, Abinas. You, would you like to say something? or? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, last week, ma'am, uh, I was going through like many challenges and different kinds of thought. It's just coming around in my mind. But uh, it's but as we studied, ma'am, last week, I said that no, this is the lie that enemy is putting in front of me. But this is the time to take take word of God and with authority and just cancel it. And I think, ma'am, if I say practically, it's really helpful. Like the way you feel peace and the way you feel joy and the way you conduct your life after that. It's really amazing. It's, and I think it's really helpful and praise God for that. Thank you, ma'am. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Avinas. Thank you. So, uh, and let, let the teacher also say something. So the, uh, this is something that I, I mean, I've, I, I keep reading this, uh, this book, but um, you know, every time you read it uh, or every time you go back to it, it really changes something. And I think every time this is a new learning and uh, something that I've, uh, I started doing, <clears throat> in fact, two weeks ahead, this is not just this last one, but two weeks ahead, is that, um, you know, for those, those of you who may have uh, kids and especially if you have teens in your home, um, you know, some of the things that you observe and some of the things that you see tends to become extremely worrying and, uh, you're immediately in a place of going a couple of years ahead. You know, you go five, 10, 15 years ahead and say, okay, if this is going to be the case. What is it going to be like, right? I don't know if any of you um, feel what I feel. Uh, you can relate, thank you, Avni, <laughs> right? So just looking at where they are, what they're doing, and you, you say, Lord, what is gonna happen if this, this goes on? And you're in a place of um, maybe that then then you know immediately as especially um, and uh, I have two uh, people here who raise their arms too. Uh, but as a mother, you one is the question of God: Have I done enough? Am I doing it right? Have I missed out something? You know, so that's the that's one of the biggest uh, you know the questions that that keep pushing in. Um, so these two things. So I said, okay, there are these two things that I have to really look and observe and say, how much of this is truth? How much of this is a lie? So the first thing of going, you know, 10, 15 years ahead, uh, this is the verse that says, it says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Okay. Think about today. You have enough to deal with today. So I, so, you know, I, I said, okay, God, I know that your grace is sufficient for me today. 
Your grace is there for me today to do all things. Your grace is sufficient for my kids to do all things. And that you have plans and purposes for their lives that I don't have to worry about. I'm not the one who's going to craft that for them. But I stand in, in just enjoying the present moment that you've given me. My kids are 16 and 13 and they, they're not even out of uh, both aren't even out of school and I'm already worrying about what's going to happen when they work or when they're getting married or whatever right but uh, you stand uh, and say Lord I want to enjoy what you've given me today I want to count my blessings as of today and not be concerned about tomorrow because you've got it all written you've got it all ordained you've got it all crafted and I choose to stay in today in the moment and in the moment. So that's something that I'm, I'm consciously doing. And I began to see that, um, you know, my face isn't as weary or as uh, downcast, but then there's, you know, enjoying the kids with a game or, you know, with a light moment rather than looking at them in the eyes of, of their future. So that was, uh, that was something that I started doing. The second thing was about the questions that come about, uh, you know, to your mind about are, are we doing enough? And and uh, so so something that uh, I mean, this is, again, this is not Bible or scripture that came in, but just the assurance that my sufficiency comes from Christ. Two Corinthians three five, that in everything it is not it is not of my own sufficiency, but my sufficiency is of Christ. And that whatever uh, God has given me today to do in His grace, uh, I I you know I know that I walk in the path that He wants. So that these two things have kind of just helped me uh, stand ground and just look at today and just just um, focus on what is um, you know what can be enjoyed at this moment and not question not keep at a place of questioning but being more alert to the spirit to find out lord if you how much what do you want me to do here where can i increase my sufficiency in you in such a situation so that's uh, that's something that uh, i thought i must share with you you know as part of this lesson of how uh, this also has been making me grow Okay, all right. So let's uh, let's move forward. Um, yes, Rupa, you have you have uh, you have something to share? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Today morning I lost my connection suddenly while praying. I hope no problem during this. Uh, and one more no thing problem. I wanted to share is uh, my son has passed his uh, teens. Is he's, he's in a institute, Karakpur Institute. But I have seen he's in he's close to God at the same time. He's in he's under certain deception that is really troubling me for the past few uh, last two years. So I'm standing. Uh, it is very difficult to uh, even if you say it doesn't uh, penetrate sometimes. So I'm just quietly waiting and agreeing with someone who is very close to me that he would be delivered from that uh, place of deception and see light. It's very a scary place, ma'am. But at the same time, God has given me that, uh, uh, that hope that he will deliver him and also the promise that he will deliver him. I just wanted uh, class also in your prayers, remember my son, that he will be delivered from that place of deception and understand mm. the heart of God. Thank you, ma'am. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa, for sharing. Um, I think we should probably, I'm just going to put this up as a note so that, you know, at the end we can just pray for your son. Um, yeah, okay. I think there have been, there's been, so Beth says, it's easy to berate kids about their failings, especially when you feel it will affect their future. Instead, we need to build them up and address the negative in a, in a way that builds them. My husband is good at building, whereas I know I often just bullseye the negative. So I have been working on my words. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Beth again says on my son's birthday this week, I spoke really building words over him and saw how he received it really well. I've been working on my words and praying blessing over him. Amen. That's, that's wonderful to hear that uh, each of you are... Um, uh, uh, you know, really taking this seriously and moving on with this. Okay, I think you've mentioned about 
Um, Uh, yeah, we pray for David after this. So, in case you all have any other prayer requests, you know, as we are in this class, let's uh, just take this time because you know the anointing of God is is we believe is present here, and um, let's declare this uh, as as parents, as believers, as a church family over our uh, uh, over whatever our concerns are. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so. Yeah, I think uh, there's there's some messages there. All right, so let's um, um, uh, let's move into into um, the third and the fourth uh, uh, point that we're looking into. So the third point that we we are we we're going to focus on a certain discipline that we need to maintain that will cushion us from uh, from staying emotionally whole is to guard our hearts against negative emotions to guard our hearts against negative emotions so before we come to this place i think um uh, to, to just be able to understand that um there are so emotions are a part of us god made us with emotions um and that's what makes us a feeling being okay god is is a god of emotions he he you know scripture does show and i we looked at that in the early uh, parts of our class of how uh, of how we we see god's nature and and the emotional so to say of god and that's how he also created us because that's what makes us uh, our emotions are what makes us maybe different different from other uh, forms of creation that God has made, right? So there are there are different kinds of emotions that we experience, and just for a for a classification of you know there can be positive emotions, there can be negative emotions. Now, what do emotions do? Emotions act as a as a gauge or as a barometer for us to understand that something is going wrong or is going right. Okay, it's like that internal bell in us that really uh, helps us see. Okay, that that this is this is a good feeling or this is a bad feeling. So emotions are natural, and that's something that God made, and uh, um, it's it's something that helps us to to chart our behavior as well. Okay, so uh, and when we look at positive and negative emotions, all this was given to us uh, by by God. But nonetheless, what we need to be careful about is how much we harbor and. Uh, a very strong strong sense of but yeah oh. uh, am i audible ma'am your voice is uh, breaking you, 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 you cut out a bit ma'am am i audible yeah. now yes ma'am okay all right because you all, but, all but we, have... we miss we, we... You we missed, missed we missed like like two minutes or one minute of what you said oh okay i'm sorry okay so um yeah so ma'am again again we're not able to hear you ma'am Head, head, 
I audible now? I think we, we can hear Pardon? you now. We can hear you now. Uh, the, the video is also switching off and on. Like it goes back on your picture, then it shows you afterwards. Like it's it seems like okay. something's wrong with network. Something, yeah, I think something's wrong with my network. Am I audible now? Can you see me? Can you hear me now? I think now we're talking first. Yes, yes ma'am. All right. Okay. Okay. Right. Sorry. So sorry. I uh, don't know what's wrong. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, I, I was mentioning to you about emotions, and I said that, um, you know, as we had learned, that God is the one who's who's given us our emotions. Our emotions are the one that acts as a barometer, acts as a gauge for us to understand um, where we are at or what, you know, what, what will, what, what is going on inside of us so this is something that god desire that god has given unto us now when we look at emotions they are a different range of emotions we may experience now just to classify it there is a classification of positive emotions or there's a classification towards negative emotions now are negative emotions bad in itself you no know, that like i said that's what is given to us to to help us to channelize and understand where we are however what becomes uh, what what makes it negative or what makes it destructive is when we continue to dwell and harbor in a set, set of in a, in a set or a pattern of negative thinking that adds on to those emotions and we get stuck there so um, it, these emotions that are given to us should help us to channelize where we are at and come to a place of guarding the, our hearts with regard to those emotions so that we can keep ourselves um, uh, more positive, we can keep ourselves more uh, um, more strong in in the spirit in the in the spirit right so so are those negative even you know uh, so a lot of people sometimes ask me you know i i kind of feel negative in in things or there is a sense of sadness or there is a sense of resentment or i am feeling angry is that wrong so yes these emotions do come but to be able to quickly deal with it it's like you know in a in a garden where you may be having garden uh, you know when when you are growing plants and you have a garden there are weeds that grow so the the time that you see those initial weeds it's it's important out because or else you know it grows alongside with your with your fruit bearing plants and that kind of chokes it so similarly yes these emotions are there but we are looking at ways of how we need to uh, um, and need to handle that emotion, need to guard ourselves on that emotions. Now, some of the unhealthy emotions that that often that that need to be recognized um, uh, is and, and I'm this is not an entire list, but something that we need to be aware of. So the, one of the biggest ones that I think is very common that we see is bursts of anger, right? That uh, being being at a place of, of rage or wrath. The other common that we see is uh, being depressive or being sad or um, as opposed to, to what would be what we call being cheerful or being being joyful. Um, the the others are often this sense of guilt, the sense of shame, uh, a sense of pessimism every every time looking at things at a negative from a negative point of view also being very uh, very critical about uh, oneself or about things outside there can be other forms of jealousy um pride uh, also uh, you know to 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 being manipulative or deceptive or controlling now these are all suspicion or or a sense of mistrust that that may come about now all of these emotions as we see it are um, you know are, are things that can definitely cause a, a sense of emotional brokenness the more that we have we stay in it and we harbor it so so to be able to first identify and then to be able to guard our our emotions so uh, and where how do these emotions come up usually in response to 
uh, to the way that we we uh, perceive or see a situation or in response to the way we interact with people or in response to what others may say unto us or how they may respond unto us uh, in in a certain situation these these are the times that the negative emotions that can often stir up so to be able to identify so maybe maybe you know simple examples of uh, of of these negative emotions like maybe you're at your workplace and um, your boss has given given somebody else uh, a job to do uh, which probably is something that you would have done in the past but somebody else gets that and immediately there is a thought of you know uh, first of all the fear the fear that rises as to so it it could it the, the kind of emotion could be very vary depending on how we are processing what has happened so it could either be one of suspicion maybe he doesn't like me um, maybe he wants to push me out maybe he doesn't trust me or there is it could be uh, a sense of uh, jealousy towards the person who's who's getting the uh, the opportunity or it can be uh, a sense of just feeling critical about about the boss and maybe spreading news about him that he isn't he isn't uh, a, a nice guy uh, you know so these these are certain situations that could just probably create that sense of a uh, of a build up of these negative emotions or um, maybe you know uh, there is uh, you've gone to a hospital and you've got a report uh, from the doctor about certain maybe some some kind of a condition and immediately there is fear that rises up there's anxiety that comes up or uh, certain issues in relationships that come up that again creates the sense of sense of a deep sense of negative emotions again worry or frustration or anger or uh, a sense of sadness or a disappointment a sense of helplessness so these are different ranges of emotions you and i may feel in the middle of situations so like i said these emotions will come to you they are they are supposed to do what it is meant but the important thing is not let it take root it is not allow it's not letting it take uh take a hold and bring in a place of uh you know it it completely occupies you and and your life uh if you look at proverbs 12:25 the verse says anxiety in the heart of man causes depression but a good word makes it glad so if you look at you know the progress of the emotion in the script in this verse that it says it says anxiety causes depression um you know jealousy causes envy uh sadness causes depression anger causes rage causes wrath so if you see there are there can be degrees that will that will move when we continue to allow those emotion to harbor so it's uh, you know if you plant something when you plant a plant uh the it is easier to pull out a root when it is still young and when it is still fresh but the more you allow it to grow the deeper the roots are going to get and i and it's as simple as that the minute you begin to notice anxiety notice fear notice um uh anger that's where the root you know you check the root and take it out then and there because or else it grows deeper and deeper and stronger and stronger and and it becomes almost like a stronghold it becomes so very rooted inside of you and i think that's one of the um you know good a uh, a uh, uh, good thing to do you know and i and i believe it's a life skill to do is to learn how to manage <clears throat> um uh, be aware of your emotions and a question that um in you know, a generally in counseling when when i work with people one thing that i keep asking them is you know especially when when there are these kind of emotional hurts is whenever a situation happens ask yourself what is going on inside what am i experiencing what am i feeling because it's an important thing to identify to become face to face with those rudimentary forms of emotions that come up 
you know it being anxiety it it being um, uh, the smaller smaller forms of those bigger emotions so to to it's easier to work at it it's easier to get it off when it is rudimentary when it is at its nascent stage but the more that it gets deeper the more get it gets stronger it becomes a lot more harder okay so the the so as we as we've understood emotions are are god given uh, negative emotions are are is something that helps us to to understand what is going on however we do not allow it to take root to be established to remain or to occupy our lives we are to uh, do the best to keep and guard and discard it as a believer how do we guard and discard these negative emotions um the first and the sure way is what we read in isaiah 53:4 and we we see how specifically uh scripture talks about what jesus did on on the cross for us so isaiah 53 verse 4 it says surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by god and afflicted so it says he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows whatever your heart is heavy at he's already carried it he already knows it he he's already taken it okay so the word griefs means sickness and the word sorrows in greek is to mean pain so when jesus took uh, our sin on the cross he also took our griefs he also took our pains and that work has been finished so god has taken away that so when we <clears throat> release it to him when we give it to him we can be sure that he has already carried it he's already taken it so that is uh, that's one reason why for us to be aware of these negative emotions that when we have these negative emotions especially the ones that bring us to a place of sin you know in ephesians it says in your anger do not sin right so whatever will bring us to a place of sin is what we hand over to jesus hand over to him because he can carry it away from us now when we uh, you know and i think it's it's something that we can actually just close our eyes to visualize this the way that god has taken away the pain or the sadness or the or the or the fear or the frustration or the anger and he takes it so so actually you know giving it to him just placing it to him and this he did for us he's he's he did it for us so that he can give us in place of that he gives us joy so in place of ashes there's beauty in place of uh, mourning there's joy in place of sadness there is gladness so it it is an exchange that we when we release that to him um in faith we take away what god has given for us and all of that is is truth and that's what scripture says that he whatever he he has so much more than what we need to carry so just giving it away to christ giving it away to to jesus because he carries carries it away he's promised he's carried it away it's finished there is no need for us to hold on to it now even through this you know there comes uh, so even when you have placed it when you have submitted it when you have surrendered there can be times that you know things repeat there are certain maybe situations that repeat itself over and over again so yes it may be a constant consecration coming every day and placing those emotions in god's hands especially if any of you are going through situations that 
you know, that, that happen more frequently, or you may be living in a situation where you are experiencing um, something, some situation that brings about a lot of negativity, a lot of those thoughts. It's a daily consecration, you know, just like you sanctify yourself, you know, um, you, every day you're placing in submission all your thoughts, your, your words, your deeds, your yourself. You hand over your emotions, say, God, uh, today I'm, I'm releasing this to you because I know that you will carry, you have carried away this from, from me. So to doing that on a regular basis, because there can be situations that may not be a one-off. You may be in the midst of something. You may be in the midst of maybe a prolonged illness, uh, there is fear that's, that's coming in, or it may be in the midst of a difficult relationship that doesn't seem to be coming to a place of reconciliation, or it may be at a place of, um, uh, of being in, in, a, in, in, a, in a habitual sin, in, in, a, in a sin that you're, you're continuously engaging in and uh, feel the power, uh, power of sin so strongly. Being able to consecrate yourself on a regular uh, basis, whatever the situation may be, because he's promised that he will carry it away. Okay, so... How do you guard yourself? The fir first, first one is to let Jesus carry, carry them away. Okay, I'm just going to stop for any questions. If any of you have any questions here, any questions, any thoughts? Okay, all right. Speak okay. to the next one. Uh, what, what? How else can we guard ourselves? Is guard our uh, guard and discard our negative emotions? Is to be is to live in the place of peace. Um, something that the Lord has, Jesus assured unto us, is that His peace is with us. John fourteen twenty seven that says, "Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled." neither let it be afraid. So something that he has given us is a place of peace. And um, this verse, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just picking up the, the verse on, on my screen. Just give me a minute. So the, this verse that says, Peace. Okay, uh, it comes from from another Greek word that is called as irony, irony. Okay, and this is to mean one of quietness and one of rest, um, as against you know in some other uh, in in other, in other uh, parts where this peace is spoken about. It's talked. It's spoken as shalom. Shalom is a total well-being. But in this one, it's it's another verb of scripture that is meant a place of rest, meant a place of quietness, a place of serenity. So it says it's that which he gives you. It's that peace that he gives you. And this is not the kind of peace that the world gives. The kind of peace that the world gives is a trouble kind of one, which is temporary, which which may fix things at that point of time and uh, and gives an illusion of quietness or rest. However, the peace of God is even in the midst of a trial, in the midst of a conflict, in the midst of a tribulation, it is the rest and the quietness that he gives, gives unto us. And that's the peace that he's assured unto us. Another scripture that is that is um, written is on John 16, 33, which Jesus himself says, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So that's John 16, 33. And in this verse, um, uh, that scripture to tell you, yeah, so the, so the, so the same wo word, uh, 
irony is used even in this where there is again a place of quietness and rest that is that is given to his children so even though we are in a place of tribulation even though we are in a place of difficulty or everything that is that is pushed at us we have the peace of the lord we have that quietness and we have that rest so uh, how do we appropriate this how do we apply this in our lives um and you know for for all of us we we've, we've gone through sometimes there have been certain crises that has come in in our lives and it shakes us it it absolutely uh just it someone has just pulled off the carpet from under our feet we lose our grounding we lose our place and we we, we feel flat and left uh left thrown off and to to bring ourselves to a place of peace is is you know at, especially at a time when it is so when it's difficult unless and until we build ourselves on a regular basis to know that the lord speaks is with us when you're thrown into the fire is not the place to build your 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 uh, uh, faith in the lord it's something that is done before that it's like you know when you're running a race you can't expect to run a race without a good form of exercise if you will you will either have a stretched ligament or you're going to you're going to break something you're going to tear a muscle something right uh, your muscles aren't in shape your muscles aren't steady and and stretched and um and built up made strong and that's how we are in our emotional lives that if we need to be strong in the lord at a time when a crisis comes when we are pushed into the fire we we need to do that before we need to be in a place of building ourselves in god's word in the peace of god holding strong with that so that when we are pushed we are ready to run that race without a stretched ligament or a broken back right so we can be in a place of peace in these areas um, you know especially in tribulations when there are crises that come to us if we take the time right now even you know it may maybe things are going really well well that's the place where we where we just stand and feel the peace of god so that's that's one one a uh, sure way of knowing that you know at a point of time when that is there you will remember you know you go back to the time of where you've built yourself and god reminds you he will guide you into that truth that you know my peace has always been with you and my peace continues to be there okay so um uh, uh, yes yeah, so we we've, we've just we've just kind of halfway into that point we'll we'll uh, uh, stop for a 10 minute break here and come back uh, to resume that so you could quickly go in grab a cup of coffee uh, add a couple of biscuits and come back wash your face and come back see you soon <laughs> 